In this video, I'm going to be going over the best cybersecurity certifications from S tier all the way down to F tier. I've gotten millions of requests to go over the best certifications to get into the field, and I get it. I mean, come on, look at this. What the actual f is going on? Are you supposed to get all of these to get a job? Well, you could and collect certifications like Pokemon for the rest of your life, wow. pretentiously claiming to be smarter than everyone else around you by virtue of you being able to memorize questions to answers for tests. As if you're going to be given four multiple choice options when someone breaks into your network. Now, if you don't already know who I am, good, because nobody does. I'm just that guy in a mask who is currently a cybersecurity analyst for an A tier Fortune 500 company. <laughs> Sorry, boss, we ain't S tier. All right, enough shenanigans. Let's get started. Let me preface this rating system. If you disagree with me, that's okay. You're wrong. <laughs> no, no. But the method that I use to rank this system is this. I took a random perfect sample size of 100 job listings, I pulled every certificate they mentioned, and I did some salty late night research on Reddit, on YouTube, on blog sites, and I mixed in my own experience applying for jobs, my old coworkers, my old professors, and my boss. All to finally answer the age old question, which one is best? And answer whatever the hell this job listing means by grade A security certificate. What the hell is even that? Increase your odds of landing that first time interview and eventually the job. I'll explain my reasoning for each ranking. And if you disagree, then please leave a comment down below. It's going to help everyone if you comment. Now every rating is gonna take into consideration reputation, as in how well is it known, cost, difficulty of obtaining the certificate, and most importantly, how useful is the information inside of the certificate going to help you practically speaking. At the end of this tier list, I'm gonna further explain why having any one of these certificates can actually do for you. So don't miss the end takeaway from all of this. All right, let's get started with the elephant in the room, CompTIA. Keep in mind that all CompTIA certs, as well as a ton of other ones I'm gonna cover, only last for three years and have to be renewed after that. I'll go over a few certs that don't expire, but as security evolves, so does the cert. A plus. This won't get you a job in cybersecurity. Definitely F tier. And don't get me wrong, you do need to know everything that is on the test, but you're gonna have one hell of a time getting past the hiring gates if this is all you have. You could land a general IT job from it, but this isn't a tier list for general IT jobs. Next is Network Plus. <laughs> this is like the A Plus's lifelong best friend. Hello? I love you. You'll learn the basics of networking and could get a job as a network intern or associate, but good luck landing a security job with just this. Plus, you do need to know everything that is on this test. And in my sample size, I saw it asked for one time. And for that reason alone, it's a D tier for definitely not gonna get you a job. Security plus, oh boy. <laughs> this is that one popular kid in class. Gets all the attention, but really isn't all that smart. This one is the goaded gatekeeper of a massive amount of jobs. By gatekeeper, I literally mean it is sometimes required for you to have the job. Now, something that I discovered on LinkedIn that maybe a lot of people don't know is that the parsing for the search bar sucks a good amount more than Indeed. If I had to rank job boards, LinkedIn, you're losing points for this. Now, searching for CompTIA security on LinkedIn brings up this. It's hit or miss whether or not you're actually gonna get a job that asks for CompTIA or Security Plus. Whereas using Indeed's job search, you get less garbage and more relevant job listings. Nice. As you can see here, there's thousands of jobs that we can search for. And my job listing sample had about 30% asking for this certificate. Now this is an entry level certificate. And for that reason, it's not going to guarantee a job, but it's sure going to help based on how widely known it is and asked for. At this point, it's just something HR lists as like a checkbox. In the same way that a college degree proves that you're capable of showing up to a place consistently for four years, this search shows that you're capable of retaining security principles. I can handle things, I'm smart! And the Security Plus certificate is only $392, which might be a lot for some of you, but compared to some of the other certs we're gonna go over, it's a very reasonably priced cert for how well it is widely known. Because of everything mentioned, this is definitely an A-tier certificate. It's widely known and it gives you a solid base understanding of security that a lot of jobs unfortunately require. And if you want some extra credit and you wanna bump this up to an A+, I highly recommend pairing the Security Plus with the new and shiny Google cybersecurity certificate that's available for basically free on Coursera that I went over in this video here. And for two reasons. The Google cert gives you vital basic knowledge that will allow you to prepare yourself to pass the Security Plus. And it gives you a discount voucher for 30% off of the Security Plus. So pairing it seems kind of like a no brainer to me. And there's a reason that's the highest ranked cert on Coursera right now. I mean, 4.9 out of five. Ooh. God, you're beautiful. So check out that video if you're just starting out in cybersecurity. Moving on, we have uh, CISA Plus and Pentest Plus. 
I clump these together because while they are roughly the same as far as difficulty, they do vary in higher ability for some different reasons. The scissor cert goes over defense through incident detection and response, whereas the pen test plus focuses on offense through penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. Generally speaking, the difficulty of the two, like I said, is pretty on par with each other. It just focuses on different aspects of cybersecurity and it just depends on what you wanna go into. Both tests are the same price as the Security Plus at $392. And now as far as higher ability, I would say based on all the research I've done and everything I've experienced in my job application process that the CISA Plus is a little bit better as far as being able to land you a job because generally security analyst positions are more entry level and easier to get into, whereas penetration testing positions, which the Pentest Plus certificate is for, are a lot harder to get into and more mid-level. They're going to be looking for more information than just the pen test, and it doesn't help you quite as much to land that interview or that job. <laughs> so C tier for CISA Plus and D tier for pen test, but only by a little. Post your complaints down on the bottom, but this is how I make sense of the certification storm that we're in right now. And yesterday. The last CompTIA cert I want to mention is the CASP Plus. This is designed for someone with 10 years plus experience in IT and five years experience in security. But unlike other certs, this isn't a mandatory requirement. This is just something that they recommend you have before you try it. So anybody can take it. The exam is very broad and covers a lot of domains. And at the price point of $494, it's only slightly cheaper than another cert coming up, vastly superior than this one and far more well-known. So this one's a B because there's a better option. It's arguably well less known than that one. And rarely does this come up in job listings. And I would be remiss if I didn't go over the highly controversial Cisco cert CCNA. This tier list is for higher ability. Cisco is so widely used that even with new technologies hitting the scene, if you plan on taking a network certificate anyways, because you wanna become something like a security network engineer, then I would always recommend this CCNA cert over the Network Plus cert as it's better than the network plus cert and it's cheaper by fifty dollars don't believe me well this chart doesn't lie the ccna is an intermediate certificate and in that it dives into more difficult configuration concepts albeit they're cisco proprietary but still gives you a far better understanding of networking than the network plus goes into i mean i had four cisco networking classes through my bachelor's degree in college so there's a lot of people backing up cisco it's easier to get a job with it in the networking community because of how well known it is in there therefore it's ranked as a c which is very fitting for cisco now, if you're looking to become a penetration tester, then you're going to want to look into these next two certs, the CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacker. This tends to be overhyped and put down a lot by the cybersecurity community, but I don't think they can argue how widely known it is and what it lacks from support in the security community, it makes up for in HR clout. Unfortunately, it does come at a high cost of $1,199, and that's if you can get the 850 CEH course waived. To be considered for testing without the course, you have to submit an application to the EC Council, which requires you to have at least two years of experience working in the information security domain. So this cert is a solid C, and that's largely in part due to the high cost of this cert, how looked down upon it is, and even with the HR clout it carries, there is a far superior, better option that I'm about to go over. It has a bigger, better, and more badass, respected older sibling. And we're of course talking about the OSCP, the Offensive Security Certified Professional. This does come at a higher cost, and at one point, it was apparently available for like a thousand bucks, but they've upped their prices. The self-guided individual course is $1,599, which includes 90-day lab access and one exam attempt. The Learn One subscription is $2,499 a year and provides a lab access for one year and two exam attempts. And if you're absolutely loaded and have bottomless pockets, then for $5,499 a year, you get unlimited attempts to pass the test. Now this test requires you to do live network penetration testing for 24 hours with questions as part of the Open Security Certification Program. This cert is for life. So unlike the previously mentioned ones, this one does not expire. And this kind of confirms its superiority to the Certified Ethical Hacker certification just because it lasts forever that means that it has to be far more difficult and given how more respected the certificate is and how it only costs a little bit more than the ceh cert this makes it far more superior it carries just as much hr clout as the ceh and it's not looked down upon this is an a tier certificate my boss looks down at the ceh and says that if i can get this cert it's like an immediate promotion for me <laughs> 
Let's talk government compliance certs. ISACA certs. The Information Systems Audit and Control Association is a globally recognized and highly respected organization. ISACA offers four certs that are very commonly looked for. There is the Certified Information Security Auditor, Certified Information Security Manager, a Certified Risk and in Information Systems Control, and Certified Governance of Enterprise IT. Now I'm clumping all these together as they're similarly designed, but they're just for different niches in the cybersecurity space. That being said, the content provided by these certs is extensive, with CISM arguably hardest one of the tests as it's geared towards information security managers, and HR will often take this interchangeably with another cert I'm going to be going over that is an S tier cert. But sadly, these are all just A tier certs. They're reasonably priced at $760 a pop. They're well respected and well known. They're just not quite living up to other certs that you could get that provide the same and more clout and more reputation and hireability. Now below ISACA certs are GX certs, Global Information Assurance Certifications. There's there's only a couple issues with these. The price, and they're not as well known as other certs. It's a shame because they are on par with the other certs, but because of the aforementioned issues, we have to rank them below the ISACAs accordingly. And in my job sample list, the, the GSEC cert was only found one time, and it's just as difficult as a Security Plus, but costs three times more C2. Wow. Sorry, just do better. The remaining GX certs are incredibly practical as far as the content and provide far more bang for your buck for that $949 price point. So for that reason, the rest are B tier. Now, if you can get any of these GX certs paid for by your current employer, then they're A tier for practical content, only hindered by their lack of reputation. If a man in the middle of a forest earns a certificate and no one knows about it, does he get a job? Now, something I didn't mention about the previous certs and that is a pro for the GX certs is that they do offer a slight discount at $100 off your retake test, whereas the CompTIA and the ISACA certs do not have that. You only get one attempt to take it. If you fail, you'll lose the money that you've spent towards the cert. So don't fail. But at a starting cost of $949, it's not really that much incentive if you only get a $100 discount on the next test. The next cert deserves a drum roll. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the cert you've all been waiting for. CISSP! <laughs> It's the CISSP. It's the Certified Information System Security Professional. If you haven't heard of it before, then you live under a boulder. That's just a stupid boulder. It's not just a boulder. It's a rock. Then you live under a rock. But that's okay, because that's why you're here. Now, this cert is widely known. And that is an understatement. It's well respected and is arguably the best bang for your buck cert that you can get right now, coming in at only $749. Now I studied for this exam like crazy before I got my current position. And honestly, after making this video, it's making me rethink trying to get back into it and getting this cert. Now the requirements of the cert to be fully recognized as a CISSP are a bit more difficult than what we've covered so far. You have to have a minimum of five years work experience working in two or more of the eight domains covered in the CISSP exam. Luckily, you can drop that requirement by one year if you either have a four-year college degree or you obtain one of the approved certificates from the ISC approved list. This is the approved list. And you'll notice that the Security Plus is actually on here. So folks, do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> Get your Security Plus first, then all you need is four years. Oh, and then the other requirement is you have to DM someone with the CISSP to back you up. That part's easy though. Just find someone with the CISSP who can vouch for your mad skills. And well, soon you guys will have me to vouch for you. And if you want me to vouch for you, then I can be reached by my Mad Hat membership in my Patreon link down below. <laughs> Just kidding, about the vouching part. The Patreon's real, but there's nothing on it yet, so. Don't worry about it. Now, a candidate who doesn't have the five years requirement to get this fully fledged CISSP can still take the test and pass it to earn an associates of ISC. And you'll have six years to complete the aforementioned requirements. <laughs> this cert covers a ton of information. It covers eight domains, and the only cert that comes close to covering this much information is the GSE, which isn't a typical certification. It's a portfolio of certs that requires you to obtain six of the GX certs I mentioned before. 
And if you've been paying attention, that is six times $949. Yeah, so that's not really a standalone certificate. But if you want to challenge job security for life and you have bottomless pockets, it's arguably the best certificate that you can get since it's six certs in one. The CISSP cert is often interchanged in job listings with the associate of the ISC because HR knows that the only difference between you and the CISSP holders is five years help desk experience or something. And looking in my job samples, there's far more jobs asking for the CISSP than the Security Plus. So this one's an S tier for sure. Think of the CISSP as one of the most versatile certifications that you can get. It's relevant to more job roles than pretty much any other cert you can get out there. Now, ISC has a, a few other certs, though not as prestigious as the CISSP are still okay. I have to mention the cybersecurity certified cert it offers. This is great for beginners and it's currently free if you join the ISC membership, which has an annual fee of $50. So it's not technically free, but this is kind of a worse version than the Google cert I mentioned earlier. It does prepare you for the Security Plus, but it doesn't cover nearly as much as the Google cert, and it doesn't give you a 30% discount for the Security Plus cert. So not really worth it. For that inferiority reason, and the fact that nobody asks for this cert and will not land you an interview, it's a similar to the A Plus cert, it's, it's an F, my dude. Next up is the System Security Certified Practitioner that they offer. This test is easier than Security Plus, and it's less known. So this is a solid D minus. Let's talk the cloud. This is where the real money is at right now. This is where everything is headed. And the level of demand for cloud security certs is going through the roof right now because it is arguably the newest domain in cybersecurity, ISC's CCSP, the Certified Cloud Security Professional, which is fabulous, absolute banger of a cert, but there's only one problem. It's not the OG cloud cert. The title of mother of all cloud certs is given to the CCSK, which is the Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge. This is quite literally the industry's first examination of cloud security knowledge when it was released back in 2010. So, so the CCSK covers comprehensive knowledge of cloud security, while the CCSP covers the same knowledge with a lot more of CISSP governance topics and domains mixed in. The CCSP also requires the same five years of work experience in security domains in order to obtain the official title of CCSP, whereas the CCSK has been around for longer, costing $395 compared to the CCSP's $599. It can be taken from the comfort of your own home and it's an open book exam where you have 60 minutes to answer 90 questions. For that reason, it is easier, but it is impossible to research every single question in that amount of time. But that is why it is significantly lower in difficulty on the list here, with the CCSP being at $599, which is significantly more, but it is certainly agreed that it is more prestigious of a cert to obtain. ICS even writes, one important distinction to note is that the CCSP is a certification and the CCSK is a certificate. Oh, ISC, that is semantically pompous of you. Now, in my opinion, the CCSK is an S tier cert. Yay. It's well known, it's easy to get, it's more bang for your buck, and it lasts forever, whereas the CCSP has the five-year requirement and you have to renew it regularly. And a lot of times in job requirements, they're taken interchangeably. So HR is going to look pretty similarly at the two certs. So obviously that makes the CCSP an A tier right below. Maybe, maybe A plus if we're being semantically generous. And while we're on the subject of cloud certs, Azure security certifications. These are legitimately slept on. My ex coworker landed a job as a Azure engineer with just a, an associate cert alone. And for $164 and a significant amount of companies utilizing Microsoft software, this is a solid A choice. It's arguably just as easy to land a job with an Azure certificate as the security plus certificate. So I really have no no choice but to put it in this tier considering it's cheaper than the other mentioned certs. Azure also offers multiple paths to advance in your certificates and you can build your knowledge in advance into the Microsoft certified cybersecurity architect expert. Now I know some of you are thinking what about AWS? Well AWS doesn't have quite as many certificate paths so for that reason and not even going to mention it. Sorry, I didn't make the cut. There's also Google's Professional Security Cloud Engineer cert that you can get. At $200, this is a decent option, although not as widely known or as sought after as the Azure certs. It's also significantly easier than the Azure cert, as you can see in the list here. So for that reason, we got to bump it down a few because it's not as well known and is probably not going to land you a job. So we're going to have to bump it down to the C tier. That's enough for cloud. We're approaching the end of the list and there's only a couple special mentions left. ITIL certs. 
These exist. D. You D. suck! Blue Team Level 1. I've actually been asked about this a lot. After researching its offerings and reputation, everyone agrees it's far more practical and useful for preparing for working as a security analyst compared to its closest comparable match, the CISA Plus. The only problem is that HR has no fucking clue what it is. And it costs more than the CISA Plus at $500. So for that reason, it just has to rank lower than the CISA Plus. Sorry, blue team. You're great, but you're going in the D tier. All right, so as promised, the obvious takeaway from this ranking is to just obtain an S tier cert, right? Wrong. Certs are useless. Just go to college. Gotcha. No, but seriously, none of these certs are going to guarantee you a job because you still have the interview for the job to get through. And even if any one of these magical certs gets you past the HR gates and into a Zoom call with the hiring manager, if all you did was cram for a test and fail to apply the knowledge to building a portfolio of security projects, of hacking tools, or documenting anything along the way, then you're going about it all wrong. You'll most likely sound like someone who doesn't know what they're doing and not fully committed to the field. And now this is especially true for the entry level certs mentioned. Generally speaking, the certifications lower on the list are less likely to get you that first time interview or much less a job. So really the whole purpose to getting a cert is just to increase your odds of getting a job. And the harder the test, the more likely you're able to retain some semblance of proficiency in whatever you learned. And the easier it is, the more likely you're going to forget everything that you crammed for, as it probably took less blood, sweat, and late night tears to obtain. In this chart, you can expect the bottom to probably increase your odds of getting an interview by zero to 10%. And it goes up from there exponentially. And at the very top of the list, we have the very last cert that I wanted to go over before all of you forget this video ever existed. The God Tier Certificate. I've done it. They said it couldn't be done. I'm going to be rich. <laughs> Please subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, share it to your friends. Thank you so much for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.